Good morning, 8th grade history class, and welcome back to our another installment of our online classes that we're going to be doing over the next couple weeks. Uh, today, we're going to be finishing up uh, section 1 of chapter 20. These will be your notes for today, so make sure that you're copying those down as I'm speaking right now. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind you all, no one has turned in the map books. Turn them in, please. I still need map books, page 67 and 68. Literally, the only person that's turned it in is Mr. Powell. So thank you, Mr. Powell. Everyone else needs to turn in their map books, page 67 and 68. Now, most of you guys have been sending in your work, and if you have, I've already graded it for you and recorded it into your Jupyter grades. Anything that's been graded has been put down in one of the folders up in the front of the building. So whenever you come downstairs or your parents come to uh, drop off some work, there's a folder with your name down at the bottom, uh, and then you can grab all of your graded work from that. Like I said, most everyone has been turning in their work except for the map books. Uh, there are a couple people who still haven't turned in those uh, chapter 19 reviews, nor the quiz number 34, nor um, the uh, section review 20.1. Uh, I still need everybody to turn that. Those are the three assignments that you should have done by today, along with the map book. Uh, Mr. Armour, Mr. Lyle, and Mr. Ray, I'm speaking to you. Please, please, please make sure that you turn in those three assignments that I just talked about. So everybody needs to turn in the math book, page 67, 68. And then some of you guys need to turn in uh, chapter 19 review, quiz 34, and section review 20.1. Now that we have all of that out of the way, make sure that you're staying on top of all of your notes and all of your reading. And if you have, you'll see that the notes for today are pretty simple. I'm just going to go over them very quickly. And then you already know what your homework is tonight. It's going to be section review 20.1. Uh, last time we left off speaking, we were talking about the lead up uh, to World War II. We were talking about some of the uh, different sides and, and important men that caused World War II to happen. People like uh, Hitler, Mussolini. We talked a little bit about FDR, a little bit about Winston Churchill. This is actually going to be talking about the war itself. Now, when the war begins, it starts on September 1st, uh, 1939 as Germany invades Poland from the west and Russia invades Poland from the east, uh, the Germans implement a new warfare. Unlike the trench warfare, which they used in World War I, they're going to use something called Blitzkrieg, which means lightning war. Krieg means war in German. Blitzkrieg means lightning, lightning war. All right, lightning war, essentially it's the strategy that you send in the artillery and the airplanes first to kind of soften them up, bombard the enemy. Then, you uh, take all of your tanks and you burst a line through the, uh, through the defenses, causing chaos and people to scatter. And then once they uh, lose their discipline and they abandon their lines, then you bring in the infantry to kind of clean them up very, very quickly. And so you take a lot of territory very, very quickly doing this. Uh, after uh, Hitler invades Poland, he then sets his sights on to the rest of Europe. Uh, of course, his big prize is going to be France and England. That's what he wants to get. And then his ultimate goal is once he has France and England, he wants to use that to invade Russia, which is his eternal enemy. Now, Russia still thinks that they're friends at this time because of the Nazi-Soviet pact that we spoke about uh, in the last lesson. So after he invades Poland, he and Russia split Poland down the middle. Then Hitler invades Denmark. Uh, he invades Denmark because it's on its way to Norway. And what's in Norway? Norway has a lot of iron ore. Iron ore is used to make steel. And so steel is used to make tanks, airplanes, and so on. And this is what he needs. And so in order to get the iron ore from Norway, he has to get past uh, Denmark. And so he goes ahead and invades Denmark and then Norway. And then once he has those secured, then he can shift his focus onto what's called the Low Countries in France. Low countries being Luxembourg, Belgium, and then eventually France. In May of 1940, Germany uh, invades France, and by June, they are able to take Paris. So unlike World War I, which was fought for four years for, you know, a couple hundred miles of territory, no one ever took France, uh, or I mean, no one ever took Paris, even though most of the war was fought in France. In World War II, Germany is able to take France, and Paris within about uh, just about a couple months of invading it. So now all that's left is Great Britain. 
Remember, Spain is actually allied with uh, Germany at this time because of the Franco regime. Uh, remember, Hitler and Mussolini helped Francisco Franco in the Spanish Civil War uh, prior to World War II happening, and so he's allied with them. And so they don't have anything else to worry about in Western Europe except for Great Britain. And so Winston Churchill, who's the Prime Minister of Great Britain at this time, asks the United States for help. Kind of like we helped them in World War I, we want the uh, British to win. They're kind of our ancestors. we really close allies with them. And so we, of course, are pulling for them. And so we start sending them supplies, weapons, lending them money, support, because we want them to win the war. That way, when they win the war, they can pay us back. Uh, Hitler starts bombarding Great Britain in October of 1940. And this is known as the London Blitz, uh, essentially sending over his V1, Vengeance 1, and V2 rockets uh, to basically destroy the city of London, hoping that if he destroys London and softens it up, the people of England will kind of give in and it'll be easier for him to actually launch the invasion across the English Channel. But this, of course, never happens. Uh, the English people are steadfast. They, they rally behind their leader, Winston Churchill, and they don't surrender. Uh, the British Air Force, or the Royal Air Force, actually defeats the German Luftwaffe in many combat battles over the English Channel. And then, of course, the British Navy is much stronger than the German Navy, and so a sea invasion across the English Channel is almost impossible. And so Hitler basically abandons his plan uh, to invade England. Now, he does continue to bombard it throughout the war, but he never launches an actual invasion. The United States then passes something called the Lend-Lease Act, where essentially we will lend and lease money and supplies to Great Britain, and then they will pay us back once they win the war. This is something we're also going to extend to the other country in Europe at this time that's fighting Germany or will be fighting Germany, and that's going to be Russia. Because on June 22, 1941, Hitler, with three million men, invades Russia. He does the, the unthinkable, the, the thing that everyone always says, don't do it. He does it. And at first, he's very, very successful. He launches three army groups, about a million men each, Army Group North, Center, and South. They are supposed to take the key locations of St. Petersburg, Moscow, and Kiev. Uh, Kiev is taken, St. Petersburg is surrounded, and they're only about 40 miles outside of Moscow. So it is working out in the beginning. Remember, uh, he invades in summer, in June. Uh, by October, of course, the Russian winter comes, and we all know what happens there. Uh, the United States, of course, at this time is sending, uh, as part of the Lend Lease program, uh, aid to Russia, billions of dollars, uh, so they can build up their tank force, their air force, and hold off the, the Germans. The United States realizes if Russia or the Soviet Union falls to Germany, essentially uh, Hitler will have a free hand in the world. He will have control of the Atlantic Ocean as well as the Pacific Ocean and connect his empires with with the, uh, their other ally, Japan, in the east, which will, at that point, almost make it impossible to win the war. And so it's very important that Russia holds off the Germans. In the summer of 1941, Winston Churchill and FDR uh, meet at a uh, location in Newfoundland, Canada, and uh, basically discuss how the, wars, or how the world is going to be drawn up after the war. Uh, they also draw up a document called the Atlantic Charter, which eventually after the war will create what's called the United Nations, which is the organization that leads the world today. Almost every country is a member. Uh, to go back in time a little bit, let's talk about Japan. In 1937, Japan invades northern China, a territory called Manchuria. They see this kind of like as the Germans see the eastern lands as their uh, living space where the, German, or the Japanese population can expand. Uh, they create a puppet state called Manchu Kuo, and they install a guy by the name of Henry Puyi as the leader. Uh, and so Manchuria falls to the Japanese, and it's going to be under the Japanese occupation pretty much all the way up until the end of World War II. Uh, the, Jap uh, the Chinese hate the Japanese occupation, of course, at this time. And uh, the Chinese nationalists, which are fighting the Chinese communists at this time, uh, ask the United States for help. And so again, because of Lend-Lease, we're going to promote helping these 
uh, nationalists, and we even helped the Chinese communists in fighting the Japanese. The nationalists and the communists are actually going to take a break from each other uh, to fight the Japanese together, and then once the Japanese are defeated at the end of World War II, then they're going to go back to fighting each other in what's called the Chinese Civil War. All right, uh, so the man who leads Japan at this time is a guy by the name of Hideki Tojo. He is a militaristic prime minister. Uh, he believes that uh, Japan should expand through war. Because Japan invades Manchuria, they get a lot of their supplies, raw materials, and especially oil from the United States. Uh, because we don't like that they're invading Manchuria, we cut off their oil supply. Uh, Tojo believes that the, uh, the Japanese empire can't sustain itself without oil, and so therefore he comes up with an idea to attack the United States, forcing our hand, essentially, to uh, negotiate with him. Uh, remember, uh, Pearl Harbor, the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese never thought that they were going to defeat the United States. They wanted to prolong uh, negotiations and basically draw or push us towards the negotiation table. Of course, it has the adverse effect, and the United States declares war on Japan on December 8, 1941. Three days later, Italy and Germany will declare war on the United States in support of their Axis power ally, Japan. This is pretty much all the notes uh, for section one of chapter 20. If you haven't copied down the notes or haven't done the reading yet, go ahead and pause the video now and you'll have all of that stuff right here. Make sure that you have all of it before you start on your homework. I also want to remind you all that in your packet, some of the homework say do the section review and the identify. Make sure that you're doing and the identify, not just the identify. Uh, so tonight's homework will be section review uh, 20.1. Make sure you do that, and then as soon as you have it done, go ahead and send it up to the school so I can grade it for you, and then we can move on to our next lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy, and I hope you guys have a great day.